Are we getting a new Nintendo Direct presentation in April? Well, today I want to talk about that and why we may see one or why we may not see one in the coming weeks. Of course, if you are new here and you enjoy Nintendo Switch speculation, theories, discussions, I would appreciate you subscribing. Let's get into it. Hello there, everyone. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Botox Games. Today, I wanted to hop on here and kind of just talk about this April Direct that a lot of people are kind of expecting to happen. It's been a while since I have kind of come on here and just talked about a Nintendo Direct. Uh, I try not to overdo it, you know, with these direct videos. So, uh, you know, I, I've waited a couple weeks now, but you know, now that Princess Peach Showtime is out, now that we have release dates for Thousand Year Door and Luigi's Mansion 2, we're kind of at this point where it's like, are we getting something? Like, is, is it finally time for Nintendo to stop being so tight-lipped and announce more of their lineup for 2024? And I would say I'm about 50-50 at this point. I really want to direct in April. Like, I really, truly do want to see some Nintendo announcements in April. However, I don't know if they really need to necessarily. So the reason a lot of people started speculating we might get a direct in April is because of the user Brazil over on Fami Boards. They are the original source for saying that the Switch 2 was going to be delayed into 2025. And that's kind of when everybody started corroborating that, you know, Video Games Chronicle, um, all these different outlets, right? Um, he was the original source for that. Here's what he said back then in February. He said, here's what I've heard post Friday, direct in April, general or many, I don't know. Indie World before that, probably March. June for Switch 2 reveal. Everything in flux always, but I'm feeling good, so yeah. Now, it's March 28th. We do not have an Indie World. However, in his post, he did just say it's probably March. The Indie World could be in early April, and the Direct could be in maybe the second half of April. We'll talk more about the Indie World in a minute, but he did post an update on a Tuesday. And pretty much just reaffirmed what was said back in February. He said, I haven't talked to the Indie World source in a few weeks, reached out today, didn't get a response yet. But as far as I'm aware, that presentation could still happen in the time frame I was getting. So basically saying it would happen before the April Direct. And then he said the April Direct is still a go as of last week. Now, if we are to believe Brazil based on their information on, you know, the Switch 2 being uh, pushed to 2025, which every other major outlet really reported, it's likely he would have a good source for an April Nintendo Direct, right? But also, even not, you know, listening to his kind of rumor here, an April Direct from a lot of different angles uh, does make sense. Nintendo hasn't really marketed Endless Ocean, Luminous, Paper Mario, The Thousand Year Door, or Luigi's Mansion 2 yet. We don't know anything coming out past that. If the Switch 2 is coming out early next year, it kind of makes sense that it would be announced in the summer time frame. So anywhere from June to September, you would want to get your last major direct focused just on Switch 1 first party games out before then. Like they're not going to do a, a Switch direct in June, but then also reveal the Switch 2 in June. I don't think that's going to happen. So April kind of makes sense or May. I mean, they could do May as well. So even without his rumor, I was already kind of thinking like April, if we're getting a partner showcase in February, April kind of makes sense here. Now, what is kind of interesting regarding the Indie World is that Nintendo kind of had like a mini Indie World on Twitter last week. I didn't see anybody talking about this, and maybe this is par for the course, so if it is, just disregard this. But I noticed they announced three Indie games for Switch on one day, last Thursday, March 21st. I don't feel like they normally do that, so they announced uh, that Tachia was coming to the Switch. That was that PS5 game uh, that, that is coming to the Switch. Now it already has a physical announce. Tales of Iron 2, Whiskers of Winter, as well as um, Void Route. So they announced three Switch games on Twitter. And looking through Indie World's Twitter account, they aren't really that active, and they don't really announce that many games. Maybe it's just a coincidence, but I did find it funny that they announced three games in one day. On, uh, on Twitter through the Indie World social media, which is just kind of interesting. So maybe there was an Indie World plan and that kind of got moved around, or maybe we're still getting one in early April, uh, you know, because we're heading into the weekend here. So if we're getting an Indie World still, it would almost have to be in like the first week of April, I imagine. But I guess the big question here is, does April make more sense than June? And, and really figuring that out depends on when we expect the Switch 2 to be announced. Once again, you can look at this from two different angles. April makes sense because April has no games releasing, which a lot of people speculate means there's going to be a shadow drop. April makes sense because you're going to want to announce a little bit more post uh, Luigi's Mansion 2. Normally, at this point, we have a game for July, for example. Um, the only exception to that being when COVID happened, you know, we didn't know about uh, Origami King until late May, I think. And there was still two months before uh, that game released that it was announced. So if we get a direct in June and they announce the July game there, that's a really short time frame. Normally, we have that July game beforehand. Now, it's possible we don't have a game in July this year from Nintendo. 
I don't think that's super likely because for the past seven years, we've had a game in July. Um, you know, if, if they didn't have anything for the second half of the year, and I've talked about this before, if they don't have that many games to release, surely they would have uh, kind of moved around Thousand Year Door and Luigi's Mansion 2 more. Like, Luigi's Mansion 2 would have been fine in July, in my opinion. So, I feel like that indicates that there will be a game in July. So, when do they announce it? Now, talking about the absence of a game in April here, you know, I, I really want a Shadow Drop, man. I really want to get... You know, either Prime 2 or 3, or one of the Wind Waker or Twilight Princess, like, or maybe Luigi's Mansion. Like, I would love a new Shadow Drop from Nintendo, and that would explain the absence of a game in April. But to all the people saying, like, oh, it's really weird we don't have an April game, it's not that weird. Endless Ocean comes out May 2nd, I believe, right? It's, like, early May, and then uh, Thousand Year Door is late May. We don't normally get two games in May, so the fact that we're getting two in May and one of them comes out literally the first week of May, I would say Endless Ocean is our April game this year. I'm not discrediting the possibility of a Shadow Drop. In fact, maybe maybe that's why Endless Ocean is being crammed into May with Thousand Year Door. Maybe they already know, like, hey, we're going to be Shadow Dropping Prime 2 and 3 or something. We want to have a little bit more space for that to breathe so that Endless Ocean then can have its own little time frame in early May. Maybe that's why Endless Ocean isn't releasing in April, but I would say... As of right now, do not expect a new game from Nintendo to release in April. I think that is less likely than it is likely at this point in time. But even still, if there isn't a Shadow Drop in April, you could definitely still make the argument an April Direct makes sense because they shouldn't be marketing Endless Ocean and Thousand Year Door. I mean, Thousand Year Door, I feel like inherently is going to sell itself just because there's been so much hype from the community about that game specifically. Like, that game's going to sell itself. Endless Ocean has only shown up in a partner showcase, and while Nintendo probably doesn't have high sales expectations for that game, it would still greatly benefit it to actually show up at a proper Nintendo Direct. The partner showcase has a lot of views on YouTube, yes, but at the end of the day, it was still a partner showcase. They need to show that game again with a new trailer, um, really, you know, sell the online features, and really sell the fact that it is a Nintendo first-party game. I don't think a lot of people even know that Nintendo is publishing Endless Ocean. And the Thousand Year Door is interesting because while marketing is starting to ramp up, you know, the other day they posted the remade intro, which looks fantastic, by the way, they still haven't shown that much. Maybe that's just because they don't have anything to show. Maybe, you know, we're all wrong and there isn't going to be any new story content or like side story stuff in this game. I still find that kind of hard to believe, but maybe there just isn't much to show and that's why uh, they don't really need to market Thousand Year Door. But I still feel like showing that in another Nintendo Direct just... Like, why wouldn't why wouldn't they want to do that? But beyond all of that, beyond all of the first-party stuff, there is a third-party company that I think is going to play a key role here, and that is Level 5. Now, I haven't really seen anybody talking about this, which is crazy to me because this feels so obviously connected. But back in their last Level 5 vision, I want to say it was in November, maybe, Level 5 announced that they were going to be hosting another Level 5 vision, which is basically a Level 5 Direct, in April. And they teased the new Yokai Watch game in that uh, Level 5 uh, kind of teaser trailer for this April event. Yokai Watch is so deeply rooted with Nintendo, I would be shocked if that game does not appear in the next Nintendo Direct. Now, you can make the argument, well, that was announced for April. Supposedly, there was going to be a regular Direct in February, although that's just pure speculation. I don't really know if that's that was true. Um, so, this game wasn't going to be in time for this Direct either way. But, I, I don't know, man. I feel like there's a good chance that Level 5, if they can anyway, would certainly want the new Yokai Watch game. Whether or not it's actually announced in a Nintendo Direct or just shown following an announcement at their own presentation, Level 5 is going to want a new Yokai Watch game for the Switch to be shown in a Nintendo Direct. Now, unfortunately, we don't have a date for this Level 5 Vision. All we know is that it's coming out in April. It could be early April. It could be late April. So we'll have to wait and see. But I feel like, I feel like that's a hint uh, in some in some fashion. Like. Level 5 Vision happening in April, new Yokai Watch game being announced, probably getting release dates, uh, you know, well, we already have one for Fantasy Life, but probably getting a release date maybe for uh, Deku Police or Mekata Musashi. They have a lot of games coming out. Uh, the beta for that Inazuma 11 game just started. Level 5 is a key Nintendo partner that releases exclusive games for their platform. I just feel like if we're getting a Direct this month, Level 5 would be there, and if there's a new Yokai Watch game being announced in April, which there is... 
that would probably be in a Nintendo Direct, right? Maybe not first necessarily, like I said, but they would still want to show it. Now, with all that being said, you know, I like I, I really want an April Direct just because I want something to talk about on this YouTube channel. Nintendo has been very quiet recently ever since they gave release dates for uh, Paper Mario and Luigi's Mansion. I do want to temper expectations a little bit. I, I'm hopeful, but like they could probably wait until June. Like even though, yes, if there's a game in July, they traditionally announce that, you know, before June. They could probably wait until June, especially if the Switch 2 is coming out in March. You know, while we would like to see a Switch 2 reveal in June, maybe they could wait until September. You know, I, I don't think that makes the most sense. I do think announcing it in June and having it release in March, that pretty much perfectly mirrors uh, the, the hype cycle for Breath of the Wild. So I feel like announcing it in June, having hands-on at Nintendo Live in Seattle in September and then you know doing press reviews throughout you know the entire summer and autumn months and then releasing it in March just makes just replicate what they did with the switch basically in terms of marketing and release strategy although the only difference would be don't wait until January to do your big blowout presentation that would definitely need to happen a little bit sooner this time I feel like um, but we'll have to wait and see you know let me know your thoughts down in the comments below what are you expecting in terms of Nintendo announcements this year do you think we are going to get a Nintendo Direct in April? Do you think they'll wait until June, which is when they normally have it? Or do you think June is being reserved for the Switch 2? In which case, when do you think we're actually going to get a Nintendo Direct to announce the final Switch games? I mean, we don't know what's coming out in the second half of the year, which isn't abnormal at this time of the year. But we do normally know at least up to July. So I'll be curious to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. Of course, if you are new here, like I said at the top, uh, please consider subscribing. I would very much appreciate it. Follow me on Twitter at Botox Games. Join my Discord that is linked down below. And until next time, folks, peace.